Do. Pokemon has been a vastly popular franchise since the launch of the first games, Red and Blue, Red and Green if you're nasty. Then the TV series, and most recently a resurgence again with the mobile game Pokemon Go, and since the mid-90s has become the largest entertainment property ever. These pocket monsters are a very bunch, some are cute and cuddly, and others are venerable monsters. However, some of them resemble real creatures you might find roaming around our world. So, with the launch of the next generation of games on the horizon, Pokemon Sword and Shield, I thought I'd take the time to introduce you to some of the real world creatures that Pokemon are based on. And needless to say, with these guys, don't try and catch them all. So now, here are the 10 most interesting Pokemon from Generation 3 that are based on real life animals you may find in the tall grass. Hello there, and welcome to the world of Pokemon. Who's that Pokemon? Surviper. Surviper is a new snake Pokemon added in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire the first new snake since the introduction of Ekans and Arbok in the first generation. Many people suspected that Surviper was just a replacement for the first snakes, however one key difference is the design for Surviper is so much better. Don't at me. It is based on the elegant Pit Viper, an absolutely gorgeous and dangerous snake native to Japan. In fact in Japan it is also known as the Habu, a type of snake historically pitted against mongooses in roadside shows, something referenced in the Pokedex where it talks about the rivalry between Survipers and Zangus. Who's that Pokemon? Mudkip! Mudkip is one of the three starters you choose at the start of Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. An absolutely cute little guy and personally the one I chose. Eventually it evolves into quite a powerful monster being both a water and ground type so all the power of a water type with none of its weakness to electricity thanks to its ground typing. But with its cute design why wouldn't you choose it as your partner? In fact it is based on the Axolotl. Unfortunately, the story of the axolotl isn't a good one. Native to Mexico, found in the valley of Mexico, what is now present-day Mexico City, they are endemic to two lakes, Lake Chalco and Lake Xochimilco. Except Lake Chalco no longer exists, being drained for flood control. Unfortunately, Mexico City has expanded over Lake Xochimilco, leaving only a few canals that the axolotl call home. Axolotls have also been very popular pets, leading to a lot of poaching of wild axolotls too, and in 2008 it was recorded that there were only 100 individuals per square kilometre. And in 2013, only two individuals were actually spotted. Who's that Pokemon? Ninkeda. This is a bit of a cheat here, because it isn't just going to be about Ninkeda. It's going to be about the entire evolutionary line of Ninkeda, Ninkeda, Ninjask and Shedinja. Because despite being a fairly unremarkable group of Pokemon in battle, it has a fantastic evolution mechanic which, as well as the visual design, takes inspiration from an often overlooked real world creature, the Cicada. However, due to the design of Ninjask, specifically the Bush Cicada, they are a widespread group of insects with quite a fascinating life cycle. They spend most of their lives living underground as nymphs, similar in appearance to Ninkeda. Depending on the species, this life underground can last anywhere from 2 years up to 17 years. The possible reasons for this are quite fascinating, but unfortunately too long to cover in this video. At this point, they will climb up a nearby plant, often the tree their egg was laid in, and molt, becoming the adult cicada form like Ninjask. Cicadas are known for leaving their shed skins, also known as exuviae, attached to the trees and these can stay there for a long time. This is where Ninkeda's interesting evolution mechanic comes in. In the Pokemon games, if you have an empty position in your party when Ninkeda evolves into Ninjask at level 20, you'll be surprised to find another Pokemon with you. The bug ghost type Pokemon, Shedinja, modelled after the Cicada's Exuvial. Who's that Pokemon? Relicanth. Relicanth is quite an interesting pocket monster, essentially playing the role of Generation 3's third prehistoric Pokemon, like Aerodactyl in Red and Blue. Except you don't need to find a fossil to bring back Relicanth because it isn't extinct. It has just remained hidden in the deep ocean, unchanged for millions of years, which is where you find it with the newly introduced diving mechanic. Much like the fascinating story of its real world counterpart, the Coelacanth. Thought to have been extinct for 66 million years, in 1938 a museum curator discovered one among the catch of local fishermen in South Africa, and then between 1938 and 1975, 84 specimens were found in the West Indian Ocean. And in 1999, a second species was discovered on the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia. Thought to be a living fossil, 
Unchanged for millennia, many recent studies have found quite a diversity in prehistoric coelacanth body shapes compared to our current species. Who's that Pokemon? Trapinch. This is another cheat, where I'm actually looking at the Trapinch group of Pokemon being Trapinch and Vibrava specifically. As well as being a fantastic group of Pokemon, since it is a ground type that evolves into a ground dragon type, can learn flying abilities, has none of the weaknesses of flying types due to being a dragon, while having all the electrical immunities from a ground type, it's based on a fantastic little beastie, the Antlion, or as it is often known in North America, the Doodlebug. Seriously guys, up your naming game, it sucks. Antlions are quite interesting insects, and it's quite well known that antlions dig pits in which their prey, mostly ants funnily enough, fall in and they grab them with their powerful jaws, much like the Pokemon Trapinch, and envenomates them and digests them. Antlions live in the ground like this for a long time, sometimes several years until their life cycle completes and they pupate into their winged adult form. This winged adult form is often mistaken for dragonflies or damselflies, so they are less well known by many people. This beautiful adult form is honoured in Pokemon by its evolution into Vibrava and later into Flygon. Unfortunately for the antlion, it only lives in its adult stage for about 25 days, enough time to find a mate and lay eggs. Who's that Pokemon? Huntail. Huntail is a cool looking Pokemon, and quite interesting in the fact that it is one of two potential evolutions for the Pokemon Clam Pearl, depending on what item it is holding when you trade it to a friend. The other evolution is also on this list, funnily enough. Huntail is quite an interesting design, reflecting that it requires the deep sea tooth to evolve since its design is focused around its very big and formidable mouth. So following this, you can easily see how it takes inspiration from the deep sea creature, the Pelican Eel, or the Gulper Eel if you're nasty. Interestingly, the pelican eel is in fact a fish and only resembles an eel. Despite the size of its mouth, almost one quarter of the total length of its body, it only has tiny teeth, which means it likely preys on small crustaceans and some species of squid. Who's that Pokemon? Taylo! Taylo is Generation 3's compulsory bird you find early on in the game, like Pidgey and Spearow in Gen 1 or Hoot Hoot in Gen 2, so it's a key part of everyone's party in the early part of the game. As the name may indicate, it's in fact a real world swallow, specifically the barn swallow, the most widespread species of swallow in the world found across Europe, Asia, Africa and the Americas, so you should easily be able to find one in your own back garden. In fact, the whole evolutionary line of Taylo is quite gorgeous. Its evolved form Swallow also shows a lot of resemblance to Barn Swallows. However, its crest, elongated tail and wings are inspired by another amazing group of birds, the Tree Swifts, glorious birds native to India and Southeast Asia. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that the shiny form of Swallow, shinies are rare alternative colours to Pokemon, the shiny form of Swallow resembles the resplendent Quetzal, a bird native to Mexico and Panama, definitely deserving of its name. Who's that Pokemon? Gorbis. Gorbis is the alternative evolution to Huntail, which I mentioned before. Gorbis is evolved by trading your clam pearl while it's holding the deep sea scale instead, evolving into the peculiar pink long-nosed fish Pokemon Gorbis. With its deep sea habits and its long nose, it is very likely that Gorbis is based on the group of fish known as long-nosed chimeras, also known as ghost sharks are a type of cartilaginous fish, like sharks. However, they are quite dissimilar to sharks, most notably their upper jaws are fused to their skulls, and unlike sharks' sharp replaceable teeth, chimeras have three pairs of large grinding tooth plates. Who's that Pokemon? Zigzagoon. Not much is to be said about Zigzagoon, really. It is your compulsory normal type Pokemon that populates the routes just outside your hometown, much like Rattata from the first generation of games and Sentra in the second. Wow, there are a lot of repeated patterns in Pokemon. Perhaps they aren't running out of ideas because they never had any to begin with. <laughs> Zigzagoon became an annoyance to many people, however, it does fill out your party in the very early game. It is based on a creature many might recognise because of the name from the Super Mario games. The Tanuki, also known as the Japanese Raccoon Dog. Raccoon dogs are quite widespread across Eastern Asia, unfortunately they have been intensively bred in Europe for the fur trade. I will also give honourable mention to Zigzagoon's evolved form, Linoon, which is based on an African animal, the striped polecat, or Zorilla. Zorilla coming from the Spanish word Zorro, which means fox. Who's that Pokemon? Corfish. 
Corphish is Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire's answer to the Pokemon Krabby. Not much can be said about this Pokemon other than its cleverly satirical Pokedex entry in which it explains that Corphish was originally a foreign Pokemon that were imported as pets. They eventually turned up in the wild and the Pokemon is very hardy. Its populations are increasing, which is a fantastic way to address our world's version, the Red Swamp Crayfish. The Red Swamp Crayfish is a freshwater Camberid native to northern Mexico and the south and southeastern United States. It has unfortunately been introduced across the rest of the United States, but also Europe, Africa and Asia, sometimes accidentally but also on purpose from time to time. In colder climates, many populations are able to maintain themselves and aren't expanding, however in warmer climes they are multiplying and actively finding new territories, pushing out local crayfish species. Hey! So you're finally here! <laughs> Fantastic! Well, there you go. Did you know so many Pokemon were based on real life creatures? In fact, there will be many more to come in future videos. Leave a comment with any on this list you are surprised to know about, or maybe any you were sad I missed. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Naturalist Online for more videos about surprises in nature and wildlife. Thanks for watching.